it is Brian and Jack with Simple Men's Comics. We got a great show for you tonight. This is the Bolo Show where we are highlighting and reviewing those hottest comics that were just released this week. This is recorded Wednesday night on New Comic Book Day, but we do premiere on Thursdays. And then we're going to cover those first appearances, reader buzz, and variant buzz. But Jack, how has your week been? We've been busy. Yeah, this whole start of the new year has been uh, really tough to kind of get that footing, but we're uh, we're starting to hit the ground running. We've had a couple great new comic book days with some major major releases. So these uh, these comic book companies they're not gonna let us get our footing. They're gonna they're gonna hit us right in the head right off the bat. Yeah, it definitely seems like we're getting quality over quantity right now with some of these books. Yes. Full disclosure for me. Just like you, work's been super busy, especially given current events right now. But either way. I didn't make it to my comic book store, and I wasn't able to read many books today at all. We're going to get through this. We're going to talk about those hot books, what people are buzzing about, because this show is about that reader buzz, variant buzz, and you, the comic community. So we thank you guys joining us in the live chat and watching it on the replay. So do us a favor and click that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. As always, this show is brought to you from Nick Dortman at Slabbed Heroes. Make sure you check out slabbedheroes.com. Get those mo guaranteed modern nine eights. He also has some raw copies. He's also getting some store exclusives. One that we're going to talk about during this show. But we're going to get right now. We're going to bring up this week's bolo list. As we always say, this isn't just our list. Jack might be the one that creates the list, but this list belongs to the comic community, right, Jack? Yeah, definitely. This list is based off what you guys are talking about on social media, what's buzzing in the community, uh, what people are anticipating for New Comic Book Day, whether it's variants or books that they want to read or books that they think are going to rise in value over time. We are paying attention. Right. And as I said before, we are covering those first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz. And then Jack always offers a long term play. Now we know these modern comics. Long term play is just that. It's one man's suggestion. We all know the odds of how many comics that come out actually do rise in value. But either way, it's just our look at a crystal ball and offer up those long-term picks that we think could do something later on down the road. But before we do that, we're going to get right into the first appearances for this week. Starting with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 101. This is one that I've seen a lot of buzz, a lot of people talking on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even our own Patreon members in the Discord chat have been talking about this book today, bro. Yeah, so I'm kind of glad we get to lead off with a heavy hit, right? This is what I was talking about, about some like major releases coming out. You and I, Brian, we've talked about this book and made those comparisons to issue 51 um, after the last big turtle event. Um, and we talked about the fact that Issue 50 was about celebration. Issue 51 was about, about setting up that next run of arcs. And we expected the same with this issue, and I think we kind of got it. Uh, now, yes, people saw it coming. Yes, there are uh, numerous store exclusives for the book, which are going to affect print run. But you always got to remember when you're talking Ninja Turtles, the print run is extremely small to begin with. It usually only satisfies the hardcore Turtles fans. And any time that kind of like I'll say the regular comic market starts intruding into it, that's when it starts to really drop. We have the first appearance of Mona Lisa here, which is why it's in this category. Mona Lisa is a character that people may be familiar with from the uh, animated series from back in the day. So it's not a completely made up character. It's a character that's existed in the Turtleverse for, you know, 30 years at this point. But uh, it's finally brought into the comics. Uh, kind of redesigned, new look, kind of looks cool. Uh, you see her on the cover of that 1 in 10 variant, which is why I'm such a big advocate for that 1 in 10 variant. I think that 1 in 10 is going to be a major long-term play. Um, and that's the book on the far right. And if you're wondering, Mona Lisa is the character standing up on the far left of that cover. But I don't know where they're going to go with her. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, Brian, you and I have privately speculated off off air, uh, but you know I think she's been placed in this issue for a reason. Um, so I'm very bullish on what they're going to do with her. Also, I have to say, all three covers of this book are amazing. I love the the simple design of the five turtles together, the new team on the cover A. I think cover B is one of those kind of classic Eastmans where um, it has kind of nothing to do with per se 
uh, the story, but standing in and of itself as a cover B, which those tend to be really low printed. Um, there was a time when you just ordered a bunch of Eastman's and moved on, but uh, that's one I would keep an eye out for long term. So I like all the covers in this book. I think I think the the first appearance is valid, um, and I think it's one to keep an eye out for. And Comic Man Andy mentioned on Instagram, um, he's a, a Patreon member. Uh, he thought this would be my long term play. Easily could have been. Easily, easily could have been. Right, and as we talked about store exclusives, especially with Slab Heroes. Nick does have an exclusive for this by James Mulligan. It's up there right now. I believe the raw copy is twelve ninety nine, or you can get a graded copy nine eight for fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, and that's another incredible cover. So yeah, that's available right now at slabbedheroes.com. And that's going to kind of wrap us up for first appearances. There was another book on there, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Right, and like a lot of weeks, there are a couple uh, first appearances that snuck in there that didn't end up making the list. I think Deadpool had a had a first appearance and there's going to be people arguing about Miss Marvel, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So now we're getting right into that later uh, section. Starting with one of my favorite books right now is that Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number two. This one had that backstory, more of that backstory about Snoke, right? Right, right. And, you know, I recently just saw the Star Wars movie, so I'm not going to spoil anyone's attempt that uh watching that movie fresh because it was see i loved it i'm not a um, super judgmental star wars person but i love but i loved it and it makes me even more hype coming into new comic book day to read about uh kylo ren so uh yeah this this was uh, another another cool issue um it's funny it, issue number one cover a brian you called this series being popular but you you were talking about the variant who would have known that cover a would be selling for like twenty dollars yeah. you know a week you know a month later um star wars books don't usually do that this is and th- we've talked about this on the channel brian and i know you probably wanted me to talk more about this book but what this book really hits on to me is your my hypothesis about collecting which has been that if readers jump on something, it spikes books more and faster than anything else because those books dry up completely off the market. I think that's what's happening with this Kylo Ren series because there's no other reason I can come up with why these books would be going for what they're going for because even if they had first appearances, we did an entire Back Issue Bolo show on some of the biggest characters in the Star Wars universe first appearances that don't move copies like we saw with Kylo Ren. So... Uh, I'm not at all surprised how this book is performing this week. Yeah, and I think another reason why I, like you, just finally got to see the movie, so I'm not going to spoil it either. I really enjoyed it. I know there's some fans that are out there that didn't, but I think that's another reason why some of this this comic in particular might be popular, because it might be filling some of those plot holes or the, the answers that people didn't get or more of that backstory. That was what made me intrigued about it. First thing I thought coming out of that movie theater is about this series and how there's some things that I, yep. I didn't really get answered during that last movie that I'd like to find more out about. But yeah, th- this is definitely one series that's been good. And just like we talked about in last week's last call, mo- this past Monday night, they had the final word cut off for the second print of issue number one, which is that Clayton Crane cover, right? Right, right. That's And that's a book I pre-ordered that I thought, I think is, uh, you know, I don't expect it to do what the first print is doing, but it's great looking cover. And, you know, that that number one is completely dried up. So that's what you want with a second print. Yeah, and it's important to note also, I got to highlight that that second print for number one was Kevin Fields, who's another channel sponsor of ours at Frankie's Comics. That was his big pick for Final Order Cutoff, so kudos to him. And we'll see how it goes when that book comes out, but that is a gorgeous cover. Yeah, there were there were numerous uh, second prints that were really hot hitting Final Order Cutoff this week. Right, and now the one on the right, that was a that's a 1 in 25 variant, right? Yeah, and that, the art on that one's been made fun of today all over social media. Um, the artist was going for something, obviously the two sides of Kylo Ren, the, the Ben Solo and the um the kylo ren but you know um yeah i may have missed the mark either way it's it's selling for well above ratio i would say uh, it missed the mark but having seen the movie it kind of as a fanboy i could see that being part of someone's collection i saw that book on the shelf and i will say that book looks better from a distance than it does if you're like holding it's it a Monet. 
<laughs> yeah. From a distance, you're like, I see it. Yeah. Uh, when you're up close, you're like, you're, why is it wonky? Uh, you know, yeah. but. Yeah, it looks like a cover of Cracked Magazine. Right. Yeah, it does kind of have that look. <laughs> Moving on, the next one in the reader bus section was Venom number 22. Right, moving on with this Venom Island story. Um, we got a little bit, again, people can get mad at my guy Donnie, but he's going to just bring us along with this Dylan Cates story, or a uh, Dylan uh, Brock story. I uh, might as well call him Dylan Cates, uh, you know, but he it, he's going to bring us along with this so incrementally. Um, we're only going to get a Tarantino film. <laughs> yeah, it's it's clear that we're gonna get a some we get something out of every issue. If you really go back and look at it, every issue you get another piece to the puzzle. It's just that we realize that this puzzle isn't a hundred piece puzzle; it's a ten thousand piece puzzle. So each of these pieces is very small, um, and we get more of that on top of it. Um, Venom Island is kind of like a cult popular storyline with '90s kids, so it's kind of cool to be doing this uh it's been pretty well received I, i've heard nothing but positivity about the storyline albeit some negativity about the whole dylan stuff but yeah and then a lot of people are hyped on that marvel's x variant yeah so the marvel's x variant was a last second edition those in the patreon group who got the um rough draft yeah, the day before the release they'll notice that that book was not on the list that book I kept seeing posted about coming up until New Comic Book Day. So it was a last second edition. People really like these negative space books. Um, the fact that this may not be really a true negative space book, but the fact that it was done by John uh, Tyler Christopher, um, who does those and then has that similar look. And you know that those negative space variants have all done extremely well on the secondary market. I think that, that was driving people to want to grab this book. Uh, it's a great looking book, like in hand. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, Cover Bees, we've talked about this with Marvel, have never, they're so, I can't even call them hit or miss. It's like miss times five, and then maybe you'll hit. But, you know, at the same point, on cover art alone, it's gorgeous. To me, it kind of not that it's meant to, but it has like that whole Japanese rising sun type feel. Yep. But... Bloodshot. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the next one we got is the magnificent Miss Marvel number eleven. Yep. So this is the one I said that now this is I get some blowback on this one, um, and it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation. Um, we had the last issue listed as the first Storm Ranger. We heard people go, no, uh, issue number five was the first Storm Ranger. But we had issue number five on the list when it was released. It's just we didn't call it the first Storm Ranger. We called it the first new costume. Because, yes, the costume becomes Storm Ranger. And, yes, we see some, like, video image dark side style um, of... Storm Ranger, we don't have Storm Ranger in that issue. It's not really a first appearance. Uh, now, in 10, I get that people can argue, well, that's like a last page, splash page camera. We've exhausted this conversation. Brian and I are tired of arguing about that. Um, it's not our job to make the call. The market makes the call. The market doesn't consistently make the same call. The market makes calls all over the place. But one thing that has been consistent, at least of late, is once a book gets hot, it's hard for another book to come out and supplant it. So what I mean by that is issue 10 came out. It was hot. Issue 11 still hadn't hit FOC. I posted about this book the day issue 10 came out. I posted this book in my Instagram story. And I said it hadn't hit FOC yet. Put your pre-orders in for this book. Um, and I said because people are going to call it the first full appearance. And sure enough, here we are on release day. And people are calling it the first full appearance. And they're getting mad that it's not on a first appearance list. Um, but if I put it on there twice, like I've done that in the past, where I put a, a book on there twice because because of this type of situation, then I caught flack for having the book on there twice. Didn't you have it on last week? Which one's the first appearance? And again, that's just not a decision. It doesn't even matter what my opinion is of it. It ultimately is going to matter what the market bears. Um, and sometimes that's going to take longer than release week. So this book may be one day viewed as a first full appearance of Storm Ranger, but I personally believe 10 is going to hold water. And here's the other messy, complicated thing. 
We were talking about late printings, right, Brian? Um, and I said that there were several late printings along with that Kylo Ren. Have you seen the Miss Marvel connecting cover set, Brian? Yeah. So if they put Storm Ranger on the cover of issue nine, a la Camilla Khan being on that late printing in Captain Marvel. So now, numerically, Storm Ranger first appears on the cover of nine. But in actual release date, she appears in 10. It's going to murky the waters even further. Um, Marvel's doing this intentionally because it's selling books. Um, so don't fall into it. But either way, people are hyped about this story. But I think there's a lot of speculation going on. Yeah. And I don't think where it falls on the list <laughs> doesn't. Hold that as much weight. If you like the book, add it to your collection. If you don't like the book, or... You... Yeah. But you know the comics politicians. Anytime there's not a modern first appearance. People haven't figured this out yet, Brian. These publishers are going to put these first appearances on the splash page every time. Because they know we're going to argue about it. And so they're going to get to sell two books instead of one. It's been going on since, since Venom. It's been going on since Wolverine. And we can't get out of this this habit. It's, it's a, yeah, it's one of those things that's never going to end. It is what it is no. on our list. Right. I might show different on someone else's list. But as long as you got the book, that's what matters. Right. So. Next on the Reader Buzz, what's this new? It's a mini series from Mammoth, right? And clock number one? Yeah. So you and I, we talked about this one on the last final call. call. Yeah, uh, last call. Um, and it was funny because if we're being brutally honest, it was like maybe the 10th book added out of 10. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, well, it's image number one, top well, we, cow. And we were talking about top cow. Right. And Matt Hawkins is a guy who actually, um, I would say like, you know, we've had some interaction with um, social media. So like, he's a, he's a guy that I like. Um, I like his work. But, you know, top cow hasn't really moved the needle. It's funny that this book, though, dried up today. Uh, really, a lot of people had a hard time getting it. Um, it was limited on Midtown. Uh, and I think it's because some of the top cow releases have smaller print runs. If this was Skybound, this would probably be looked at differently. Um, but we talk about a reader buzz driving books. Uh, people have enjoyed this story. I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. It was one that I picked up. But it'll be really interesting to see um, kind of like the longevity of, of this book and, and where it's going to go. From here, but I think it caught some people off guard today. Right. And then the last book I want to talk about in the reader buzz, this is one that I was looking forward to, and that is that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two that came out. We talked about those variant covers where they have the turtles holding each issue as the whole different Power Ranger show. And then this one, you also got the old Green Ranger variant. Yeah, and I like what they're doing where each issue, not only have we gotten the turtle helmet set, but then we've gotten an incentive where last issue was thank you. This time it's the one in 25. It's kind of making you chase as a collector. It's kind of giving you that like almost sports card feel or of, you know, all this one's short printed um, or, you know, action figures. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a cool concept. And I got to give it to Boom. And is if you, people can point to different reasons why Boom was so successful in 2019. I think it's things like that. Um, little subtle things that they do with their different programs. But I, I haven't got a chance to read this issue. I loved issue number one. I skimmed a PDF. Um, Shredder's making some changes. So I, I'm, I'm excited to kind of get into this one and expound on it um, at some other point in more detail. But yeah, this one I think was overlooked by Ninja Turtles 101 a bit. Yeah, and if you guys have read this and you picked it up, let us know in the comments if you really think about it. Are you still enjoying this? Number one got great reviews. A lot of people like that story, especially with two beloved franchises. But are you sticking with number two? And are you going to continue to follow this series on? Let us know what you guys thought of issue number two and if you're going to continue to pick this up. With that, that wraps up the Reader Buzz section. So real quick, I want to thank everyone that's in the live chat with us right now. This is pre-recorded, but we always have that live chat going on. So we thank everyone that shows up each and every week for that. And if you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much as well. And of course, if you're listening to the audio version of this on that podcast, available on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher, thank you as well. And with that, 
we're going to jump into the variant buzz section. Then kicking us off for the variant buzz section this week, we get star number one. This is probably one of those most popular characters that's been talked about, especially coming out of that Captain Marvel franchise. I will say this on civilmanscomics.com, I put that weekly picks for trade paperbacks and omnibus. Guess what trade paperback came out this week? That Captain Marvel. So I did pick that up to catch up on this storyline. Like I've been saying in these videos, not picking up the floppies, but I promised to pick up the trade. So I did pick that up. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but coming out of those, we got star, and this is star number one. Right, and this one hasn't been a reader buzz pick. Um, you know, people are still full into that Captain Marvel series, but we haven't heard people saying, man, I want to read star solo series. The talk of this has been the J. Scott Campbell variant, the Mark Brooks variant, the, the um, what's it, G, uh, G. Hung Lee variant, um, you know, that's been talked The various store exclusives that I've seen, um, different stores put out there. Uh, I know there's like a, uh, uh, Captain Marvel one homage. Um, there is the, uh, G, uh, Young Lee, uh, version cover that Frankie's comics has. Um, so, you know, that's what the talk has been. It's been, what's your favorite cover art? What's the ratio you, you like? Um, I don't know that these books, because of how heavily they're going to, I know that this was ordered by stores, again, who did the, the retail exclusive variants where you did a 3,000 order. That's a lot of ratio variants. Um, I expect this one to go over ratio quickly. Uh, but at the same point, I think that this is one where it's more like pick your favorite cover artist. Is they got some heavyweights here. Like pick, pick your favorite cover artist and collect what you like. And even if you have a smaller budget, you can grab like that J. Scott Campbell cover B variant for cover price uh you know they got a little something for everybody while keeping the quality so I, I, you know not necessarily my thing to chase this kind of a book but i think that a lot of people will, will be chasing these variants uh today and we'll put oh, through the weekend yeah and it's weird because it was j scott campbell co covers are ones you can't really ever count out because every time i think oh you know fatigue or whatever he'll do some cover some variant that all of a sudden somewhere catches fire and, and skyrockets up there i don't know if you get the case when you have the virgin of the regular variant it might be different there we've talked about that before how it kind of washes itself out a little bit yeah but either way this is one that is meant for those fans of those artists to pick up these incentives and i agree with you i don't really see these going much above ratio but i've been wrong before the next one we talk about is that Marvel X number one. This is that party sketch variant, right? It was one per store. If they had the party, even. Yeah, they had to have the party. And then if they had the party, each one got one per store. Um, and that's why it's on the list. It was a late edition. People that weren't really aware of it. And it's really not doing a lot of money. It's like 20 bucks. I actually think it's undervalued. If the series, there's some speculation about some characters who debut in the series what is going to be Marvel's long-term plan for them. If Marvel ever does anything with these characters, this will be the book um, that you would want. This is what I would imagine will be one of the lowest printed covers being it. Like, like you said, you, you had to have the store. So there's a qualify uh, the, the, the party. So there's the qualifier right there. And then only one per store within that. Um, I think it's not going to be an easy book to find, but Marvel's X was one of those books where it just, it was coming out on a tough week where, you know, stars getting a lot of attention with variant stuff. Um, you've got Ninja Turtles 101. You've got the Tinian Batman. Um, you've got just a lot of stuff coming out all, all at the same time. Uh, the, not even, we didn't even talk about them on the list, but books like Miles Morales, The End, these The End books starting. Uh, just it was tough to just kind of put this in there. This 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 is a prequel to all that Alex Ross X Universe stuff. Right, this is one of those ones if you can find it cheap, I'd, I'd usually pick it up and just let it sit somewhere because you never yep. know the way things get cyclical or how news breaks or how storylines go. There might be something that calls back to this later on, and next thing you know, people are talking about this book that no one cared about at the time, but gets hot later on down the road. But then again, like that's only if I could get it for cheap, I'd pick that up and just put it away. Well, and that's the funny thing, Brian. This book's selling for twenty dollars on release date. There's a good chance three weeks from now, this thing could be like twelve bucks. Yeah. 
you know, I, I can see it. But that's so on and I always say that that's money that you look like hey, I'm gonna buy this, but it might not do anything, but I'm just gonna go ahead and spend the money anyways, because what it's twelve bucks. That's nowadays that's almost a damn value meal at any fast food restaurant. Taco Bell ain't cheap no more. Right. Right. <laughs> Especially when you got kids. No, no kid, right? But the next one we're gonna talk about is Red Mother number one. This is that second print. I really love the cover on this. Love Red Mother. We've talked about this before on the channel as well. But either way, this was the second print cover coming out of Boom. We got a couple Boom books on the on the list this week. Right. So like long term, this cover is a book is a uh, a cover that I think could be. I don't want to say the book to get. That's always tough to write, guess and judge. But here here's the logic on it. You know, if you've heard me talk about this, I love this book. The first issue I thought was just amazing. Um, the second issue I think is awesome. I got to tell you, though, like this character who's on the cover of this book, if you haven't read this book, only appears in, for like a flash. Um, if you were a first appearance person, I you'd argue whether it was a first appearance or not of some character in the background only appearing for a flash. Uh, so to then get a second print with the character who clearly be like the villain of the series on the cover, that holds some weight, right? I mean, that's something that if, uh, you know, this is adapted into a movie or something like that, this could be kind of an iconic key cover. Uh, and I think that the, some of these horror stories are the easiest to see adapted uh on the film and horror is just killing it at the box office and especially like horror mixed with other genres like you're seeing with new mutants and uh you're gonna see with uh dr strange so i like this book and i know that it's not doing crazy money i think there's a little fatigue on some of these boom uh creator own books but that's why i'd pick it up right then the last one we want to talk about in the variant buzz section Sticking with second prints, this is Captain Marvel number 12 second print. Right, so this is that that dark Captain Marvel storyline um, that has readers pretty captivated. This is that Andrea Sorrentino uh, variant. Um, and, you know, this one was another one where, like, light, late breaking people talking about it. Um, I think it got a lot of people's attention, maybe as they were looking at some of those other Captain Miss Marvel uh, uh late prints uh, they may have stumbled upon this one um but look marvel has done a really widely good job of late in some of these later printings there's been some really good covers coming out that i think have had some really low print runs All right with that that's gonna wrap up the variant buzz section but we got one more book to talk about for and that is jack's long-term play of the year and here we got James Tinian kicking off his run with Batman number 86. Right. And if you, again, if you've watched the channel, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Tom King fan. So I have absolutely loved um, one of my favorite writers getting to write one of my favorite characters, but that still gets to exist because James Tinian is also one of my favorite writers. And he's also a writer who's come up, like we've talked about under Scott Snyder within the bat family. He's written bat, related series is so uh you know this is not his first time jumping on a bat series um and i think this first issue he shows what he's doing right off the gate um hits the ground running we get new character debuts uh, it almost takes a quick kind of like turn from where we were going with tom king um definitely a different pacing uh, and I, it, it's dar almost darker, right? Not almost, it is, right? It's got almost like a darker tone to it. And I think it really is a great issue to set the tone for what Tinian's looking to do. And what I said in the write-up um, uh, that will be on simpletonscomics.com uh, that was on uh, um, comicbookinvest.com is it, the thing about this book is it's number 86, but it's truly a number one, right? It's 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 a Batman number one. Um, it is a, a a truly a new series going forward. This is Tinian's Batman. Um, and, and because of that, I think this book has a chance. Now, the first appearances, obviously, 
I've had people ask me all day, what do I think about the first appearances? Like, where do I put stock in the characters? It's impossible to guess that. Um, I, I'll be blatant and transparent for my secondary market people, right? My people out there who, who love to grab up those first appearances early and hope that they're worth money down the road. Um, I have been a proponent of buying into books where there are these first appearances, new creators doing it. But it hasn't always panned out. If you remember, almost every Batman creator has done this, right? Like when when Scott Snyder took over, we immediately got the Court of Owls. Um, in the second year, we got Duke Snyder and so on and so forth. He basically introduced us to somebody every year. Um, and once he wasn't writing the, that character anymore, those books kind of fell from prominence. Um, and then Tom King took over and he gave us Gotham Girl. Um, and I can't remember the other guy, Gotham. I think his name was just Gotham. Uh, but the guy, yeah, they gave us those in, right off the bat, right? And we were all bought into that. Like, okay, he's going to go somewhere with this. And they did start to use Gotham Girl, but very, 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 very late, years and years later. Um, so it hasn't always worked out. Having said that, I think the characters are cool. They're cool looking. Um, there's some intrigue also with that female character with almost like the green kind of Joker look to her coat. Uh, I think th that could be something there. Um, but I think that this one could project, if you're comparing it to like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 101, um, the audience for Batman is so far beyond look at what like the death of alfred did the death of alfred was a 15 dollar 20 dollar book and that's far less important than say first appearances so and uh, um not to trigger any of my batman fans who were really really devastated by the death of alfred but um so you know this book long term multiple first appearances i these characters were created for a reason it's going to play in a tinian story time will tell if the, their level of importance, but either way, I think cover A is a classic Batman cover. It just screams of like, you know, Batman comics we're familiar with. And cover B is Matina B and Matina. Um, dark, furious, lots going on. Um, so I, I think that, that it, the, this issue is a home run from what it's kind of like all you can expect to do from your debut issue, right? Uh, in, introduce us to where you're going. Um, and get us captivated to see where the story is going to take us. Yeah, I'm going to call it now. This is going to be James Tennyan's X-Men number 94, right? This is going to be James Tennyan, take it on the run, just like Claremont. And it's going to be years from now, it's going to be $1,000. I'm just kidding. Either way, I'm <laughs> excited for James Tennyan taking over this. I look forward to Like I said, I haven't had a chance to hardly read any of these books today, but this is one that's on the top of my list. And great long-term play as usual, Jack. And for those watching from all everything on this list or not on this list, let us know what was your favorite book to read this week what was the best story. Maybe what was the best art? We're not talking about, Hey, what book do you think is worth the most? But you as right. a comic collector, comic fan, picking up, reading the book, smelling the pages, however you want to call it. What was your favorite book to read this week? Let us know in the comments. And with that, that's going to kind of bring us to a close to this week's Bolo show. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night. We got that last call where we're going to talk about books hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. I will say <laughs> it's been a busy beginning to the year, especially in our personal lives with yeah. family, both of us with work, with our jobs. But promise we have some great content coming. So be on the lookout for that. And if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you'll be notified when that content drops. Got some great unboxings, got some reviews coming up. Got a bunch of other great content, but either way, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we'll see you in the next video. Remember those days, those L's, I could sleep right now. I get paid, pay games, stay in peace. I'm breaking the blues over steak, I gotta eat right. You could be my peace sign. I don't need that energy around me. I just need sun, you're so cloudy.